sometimes we get into situations even serving God where we're so busy doing God's work. We're so busy trying to take care of our families and earn a living. And all the nonsense that's going on in the world just gets in one ear and out the other ear. And it just boggles our brains sometimes. And I was preaching about the devil sifting our minds like wheat. But there's a calm. There's a calm that only God can give. There's a peace that only He can give. Yes, praise Amen. God. Amen. And that's His peace. Amen. He is the Prince of Peace. How many people know Amen. that? Amen. He's my calm in the storm. Thank you, Jesus. He's the one that can touch this body, touch this mind, and touch this heart. Yes. And say, peace be still, my son. Only one. And He's saying that to you all tonight. Peace be still, my daughter. Peace be still, my son. And we can say, Lord, thank you for that precious peace. Thank you for that precious peace. I don't know about you, but many of us would be out of our minds if it wasn't for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Get your Bibles out tonight, if you will. If you're able to stand tonight, stand, lift them up, shake them around. As I say, there's no dust in these Bibles because we use our Bibles. Praise God. And repeat after me with conviction in our spirit, in our heart. This is my Bible. This is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This is the invaluable Word of God. Jesus is the Word. This is the good news, the good report, the sound doctrine. This is what I believe in, stand on, live by, and trust in. Thank you, Lord, for your holy Word. Give the Lord a love offering. Amen. Yes. Thank you, sweet Jesus. There was a time in my life that when I started to go to church, See, I've been to church off and on, a day here, a day there, ever since I was a child. But when I was in my 40th year of life, I started to go to church. And four months later, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And I thought that salvation meant a home in heaven one day. I heard a scripture, John 3, 16. And this is the, the truth. When I was 39 years old, I didn't know where John 3, 16 was. I just figured it had to be someplace in the Bible. I didn't know there was a book called John. And when you're that ignorant, you have no idea what the 3, 16 means. I pray that all of you do. But John 3, 16 was one of my first scriptures that I memorized. Because it meant so much to me. But I didn't know when I memorized it, Brother Charlie, how deep that that scripture meant, what it really, really meant. It says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, thank God we're the whosoever's, yeah. believeth in Him, should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. And I read later that the devil, the demons believe in Jesus, but they don't serve him. So what does this word believeth mean? So I took the English word believeth and started to look it up in other Bibles, the Amplified, and also in the Greek. And that word has a deeper meaning than what we are reading here. Yeah. It means to trust in, to rely on, to cling to, to cleave to. Yes, when two get married, they cleave together and they become one. That's what happens when you receive Jesus. You become one with him. To cleave to, to not let go, to hold on to, for life because He is our life. Amen. A few years ago I went back into a deeper meaning and, and found out it also means this. When you believe in something, you trust it. And when you believe in something, you obey it. Yes. You love it. You honor it. Amen. That's, That's right. all part of it. So I honor my Lord Jesus Christ. I obey my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to give Him glory and give Him reverence. And I'm going to trust and rely on Him. When the world says, don't trust. When my neighbors say, don't trust. When the church sometimes says, don't trust. I'll put my trust in Him. Yeah. And the scripture ends. That those that believe in Him would not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So I thought as a young man that by trusting in Him and believing in Him and relying on Him and putting Him Lord of my life, I was going to have a home in heaven one day. But that's all I thought there was, Sister Sandra. That was it. Just a home in heaven. And I remember going to several churches and 
And it's okay to cry. I, I, I'll cry all the time. I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. No, no shame in crying. But I go to churches and they would cry about their problems and complain about their problems and, and say, I'm going to trust in the Lord and if it's His will, He'll get me out of this mess. And then I started to hear good preachers. How can they hear unless someone preaches? And faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. And then I started to get into the Word of God myself and started to understand that God, when He gave me salvation, just didn't mean he just didn't die on the cross to pay for my sins. He just didn't give me a, 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 a ticket to heaven. He gave me the kingdom of God here on earth too. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. This dirty earth, this nasty earth, on earth as it is in heaven. So we can have a little taste in heaven right now. I think it's Matthew, what, 18, 18 says that if two agree, just two agree on any one thing, we can bind it in earth and loosen it in earth as is done in heaven. So we're calling a little piece of heaven down. And I started to find out that it was God's will for us to be healed. And I started to discover Brother Peter through Scripture. That's why Scripture is great handing out. That by His stripes we are and we're healed, praise God. I want everybody to lift up a hand right now. If God has ever healed you, lift up a hand right now. Look around. Almost every hand has been raised, praise God. If God has delivered you, lift up a hand, praise God. You know what? God is our peace. He is our deliverer. So you know what? Sometimes He doesn't come when we want Him to come at that very moment. He might be four days late, just like Lazarus, but He's still on time, praise God. You know, it might look like something's dead and in the tomb, but you know what? On the third day, there's a third day for each and every one of us today. You know what? Sometimes it looks like our, our, our dreams, our desires are all gone. It's ended. But you know what? There's one that can breathe life into you, and that's God Almighty, and bring those dead dreams, those dead situations back to life. I started to understand that when I tried to fix things on my own, even after accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, I couldn't fix it on my own. He wants us to rely on Him totally, to trust Him. And I started to read that in Ephesians 1.3, He's given me, me, can you believe this? Me, little old me and you, all spiritual blessings, praise God. And it says that we're sitting in heavenly places with Him. How can we be sitting in heavenly places with Him? We're already, it says, sitting in heavenly places if we're not in heaven yet. Because His kingdom is in earth right now flourishing. When we have Jesus in us, when we have the Holy Ghost in us, God Almighty in us, the kingdom of heaven is already here. We can call those things that are as not as though they were in our praise God. Some of us don't understand that. It took me a long time to understand that. Is not claiming it and shouting it and having it. It's believing and desiring in your heart that those things that you say will come to pass if it's according to the word of Almighty God. God gives us a lot. We got a little tree up there with some fruit around it that represents the fruit of the Spirit. It's not many fruits. It's just one fruit. But that fruit contains a lot. I said, Lord God, I wish I could, I could love like you. And one time he told me, you can. You already have it. I wish I could forgive like you. Well, with my love, you can forgive like me. Well, Lord, no, I can't. I'm only human. Then God spoke to me as he's speaking to some of you and have spoken to some of you. You are no longer human. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not talking about something mystic or something crazy. The Word of God says that your spirit and our spirit, God's spirit becomes one. We're joined with him when we receive him as Lord of our life. Amen. So we're no longer only human. We're flesh. We have a soul. And God's Spirit is with our spirit. So one third of you is Holy Ghost filled, praise God. Amen. So you are more than human. So no matter what hits your life, what disasters are going through you right now, you'll cry. You might even grumble and complain for a moment. You'll get knocked down on the floor. But if you believe that God has touched you and you are His, He will take you out of that water. He'll take you out of that sea. He'll get you off the mat and get you going again. I know the fruit of the Spirit is this, praise God. And, and Galatians, listen to this. Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love. And that Spirit, the word is capitalized representing the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. The fruit of the Spirit is love. I can't love 
like I should. But Sister Pat, with God, you can love. I can love. And if you love, guess what? We can forgive. Jesus is going to be being pounded nails in His body. He says, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Stephen is being martyred, is being stoned to death. He said, Lord, lay this charge on my account, not theirs. Forgive them. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. I've never had strength in my life until I've known God's strength. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Peace. I've never had peace in my life until I have found God's peace. Long-suffering. You know what long-suffering is? Patience. God has already given you patience. When you say, i got no patience for that, yes, you do. If you have God in you, you have patience. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. You want faith? If you have God, you have faith. He's given to every man or woman a measure of faith. And faith is part of the fruit of the Spirit, praise God. Meekness. Temperance, which means self-control, praise God. I want you to turn tonight to the scriptures, praise God, to Peter, 2 Peter, starting in the first chapter in the third verse. Sometimes what we're looking for is right here already. We already own it. We already have it. Many years ago, Brother Peter, there was a farmer in Pennsylvania near Titusville, Pennsylvania. My, a couple of my kids lived in Titusville for a while. My dad's from Somerset, Pennsylvania, a little town near there, actually called Kecksburg. But in Titusville, many, many years ago, this farmer had all those hundreds of acres of land. The problem is nothing would grow on the land. When he had cows, he tried to raise them. The cows didn't want to drink the water. The water was always murky and, and bad. So this gentleman started to go back to school back in those years, and he learned all there was about oil and, 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 and about the coal industry and so on. And he had a brother that lived up in Canada, and he contacted his brother, and he said, you know what, brother, I'm going to sell my farm down here and get rid of it. I want to move to Canada, and, and I know a little bit about the oil business and a little bit about the coal business up there. And, and he said, well, if you already learned all that, he says, come on up, we'll hire you. So, see, he, this man was a smart man. He's not going to just leave his farm and sell it and, and go up there hoping for a job. He already had his job lined up. So the story goes, he went up there after he sold his land. He sold the property, I think he had like 600 acres, for $870, $870 was the price. No sense, just $870. This was back around 1865, 1870, right after the Civil War. He sold the land for $870. The people that bought the land brought some cattle. And guess what the cattle did not want to do? They didn't want to drink the water around the land. He had this murkiness in the water. The crops would not grow because there was something in the soil killing the crops. So the new farmer went and got some scientists to check out the land. And they found out that the land had oil on it. And when I got off of the web the other day, he sold that property for a hundred million dollars in 1870. That was a tremendous amount of money wow. back then. It's a tremendous amount of money today. Wow. And that little town of Titusville, Pennsylvania. Some of our oil companies have come from Pennsylvania. What am I saying, people? It's what you're looking for you may already have. What you're seeking, you may already have. I tell many a time the story of how we had a church bus at one time here. My GPS was in the church bus going back about six years, and I had to drive up real quick. I'm running late on my appointment and had to get my GPS to go out, and I remember I was going to go out, to, out there towards Worcester, Ohio, and I'm trying to get an appointment to find it on the map, and I couldn't find it, so I said, I'm going to get my GPS. And my daughter Tabitha tells me, Dad, you already got a GPS on that new phone I helped you get, that smartphone. See, the phone was so smart, I was stupid, I didn't even know how to turn it on too well. I still don't know how to work the smartphone that much. So she says, you already have a GPS on there. I says, no, I don't. She goes, it's an app. And I know by apps you have to buy apps. I, I knew that and do things. I didn't know sometimes you can get free apps, and sometimes they're already on the phone. So she goes, no, see this little thing here? You hit that, 
and, and where are you going? And she started to talk into it, and it started to tell me to turn right out of my driveway. I'm going, man, I already have it and didn't know I had it. And that's what we got. God has already given you all spiritual blessings, everything you need, healing and deliverance. And brother, we don't even know that we already got it. We own it. But once we realize that we have it, we have to now learn how to tap into it. Just because we got it doesn't mean we can use it properly. So how do we learn that? By coming to God and going to God and saying, God, show me how to use the gifts that you've given me. Show me how to use what you have for me, Lord God. Open up my eyes. See, we're at all different levels of, of revelation in church. Church is like a one-room schoolhouse. You may have first graders, second graders, third graders, fourth and graders, fifth graders in there, but we're all at different levels, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. So tonight, turn to 2 Peter, praise God. Third chapter. Yep, 2 Peter, starting with the third verse. Say amen when you're there. Hey, you have a, that's okay. It says you have a good night tonight. She had a, Hope all this, she had a seizure and wasn't feeling good. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you Thank guys. You. We'll, we'll, we, we, says we should pray for her. Yeah, I I, that's what I was doing, praying for good. her. Good. But you come back, and I'm, I want you to share your testimony. Last time I saw you was, I think, at uh, Save a Lot. Oh, yeah, we were running each other. Hey, amen. God bless you, Jane. i got to tell you how I met Jane. I would have, uh, the longer she was here. I met her at a funeral of all places. She had told people that she had prayed for someone, some little child, and this child leg had grown in front of people. And when she's telling this to people, people are going, yeah, you have that? Like, yeah, sure. But how many people know that there's nothing impossible with God? Amen. I mentioned to you a few times about a lady that will go into Walmart and different stores and get a gathering of people and pray for healing for their bodies right there in the store. That's her. That's her. That's her. Very bold sister in Christ. Sometimes when I meet her, she's a little down and out, as I could be down and out. And what we do, we encourage one another. That's what people, you can be at a Kmart or Walmart, Kmart's not even around anymore, or Myers, or you can be at Save a Lot, and all of a sudden you bump into each other, and you share the Word of God with each other. And you know what you do? You, you encourage each other and lift each other up. That's what we're to do, praise God. Amen. Sometimes you don't even know that the brother or sister might be down, but you know what? Talk to them, encourage them anyhow. But you know, everybody needs encouragement, Brother Charlie. You need encouragement. I need encouragement. You need encouragement. We all need to be lifted up. And that's what God wants His people to be, is lifted up, Lord God, by His people. By His people. See, we're God's hands and feet and mouthpiece. We know He can do all things, but He does it through you and you and you. Listen to this. 1 Peter, third chapter. Verse, 2 Peter, rather, I'm sorry, 2 Peter, first chapter, third verse. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things, say all things, all that things. pertain unto life and godliness, to the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. God, through his power, his divine power, his holy power, his godly power, has already given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. No matter how a man or woman tries until you receive Jesus Christ, you really cannot change your life. You can look good for a while. You can walk good for a while. You can, you can talk good for a while. But how many people know it takes the conviction of the Holy Ghost and the teaching of the Holy Ghost and the guiding of the Holy Ghost to really change a person? Without that conviction, without that teaching, without that leading, there's no change. But with that, I can change. I can have a new walk. I can have a new way of speaking. I can have a new way of thinking, praise God. And listen to this in three. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Not just promises, but Precious promises, and not just precious promises, but great and precious promises. And not just great and precious promises, but exceeding great and precious promises. That by these you might be partakers 
of the divine nature, his divine nature, partakers, <coughs> having escaped corruption that is in this world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, which means self-control, and temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly godliness, or kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. We can't do anything without Jesus Christ. Praise God. But you have everything already. Everything already. Reminds me of the story back in Numbers about the 12 spies. The Bible tells us in Numbers that 12 spies went out to check out the land, to look for this promised land that that God had promised them. And so Moses chose 12 spies and sent them out. And when they sent these 12 spies out to this land, they were looking for the promise of God, the promised land. Some of you are looking for the promise of God. And it's right already there in our midst. We already got it. We already have it. And we know the story that they wandered around for over 40 years, really in a circle, in just a little bit of an area. They never got to the promised land, but they could have had it many years before if they listened to the right people and listened to God. And as they're going out and checking out this land, here's what it says in, in Numbers 13. I'm going to start with verse 27. I'll just read this if you like. If you want to join me, you can. Now they come back to give the report now to the congregation and to Moses and Aaron. And 27 says, and they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. But nevertheless, the people be strong. The people that are there are strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled up, and they're very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land in the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Merites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. 30 says this, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. See, they were going to start talking about all the enemies of God being there. They had fruit that they couldn't even carry out of this land. They saw what was there. Two of them, Jacob and Joshua, knew that we could have that land, they could have had that land. And Caleb stilled the people. Be quiet for a moment, people. And he started to talk. He says, let us go up at once and possess it. Let us go and possess what God has promised. God's promises in the Bible are yes and amen. Let's go and possess what he's promised us right now. We don't have to wait till tomorrow. Brother Charlie, we can have it right now. Let us go up at once immediately, and possess it. And listen to this. For we, <laughs> we are well able to overcome it. Doesn't matter what the obstacles are. Doesn't matter what giants may be there. Doesn't matter what the diseases are. Doesn't matter what the afflictions are. Doesn't matter about all the hassles that are coming in your life. We don't have to bury our head in the sand. We don't have to run through the valley, as I said earlier. We don't have to cower like a beaten dog in the corner. There was a time in my life I wouldn't want to get out of bed. I'd lay in bed and cover myself up and say, Lord, I know I have to get up and make a, make a living for my family. And I'd get up and put on a, a false face, a smile, and tell everybody I was fine. But inside I was dying. Inside I was hurting. And as I told Sister Mary many a time, I, I felt like a worm. I was a nobody. But then God's Word got a hold of me and changed. God's word said, I am a somebody. God's word said that I'm a child of the living God. And God's word says, I possess what he's already given. I already have it. I already own it. I have a sound mind. I have a healed body. I have a healed spirit. I can be delivered of everything and have been because of him. Amen. When we really understand what his promises are, we will get well. We'll get better. There's no addiction he cannot overcome. We may not be able to do it ourselves, but with him and through him we'll overcome. Praise God. We are his children. There's no disease 
<laughs> We've seen people on their deathbed brought back to life already in this little church and other churches around here, just in town. We don't have to go to the other side of the world to see it. We've had it happen ourselves and seen it ourselves with our own eyes. I've seen people change. I've seen drug addicts get delivered like that. And years go by, 10, 12 years, and they're still free as a bird, praise God. And not, not with the, they don't have the monkey in their back anymore, and they're free serving God. God can change you and will change you if you can come to Him. But you have to understand what He's already done for you. He just has not died to give you a home in heaven. He's giving you a taste of heaven right now, an earnest deposit right now on this side of the realm. I love it. And we are able to overcome it. They're saying all the enemies, everything that's attacking you is there. Our enemies are there. Not one, but what? One, two, three, four, about five or six of them. They're there. But we can still take it. But listen to this. And 31. But. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Moses, church, I'm telling you this right now. Caleb and Joshua, they might say we can take the land. There's only two of them. There's ten of us. And we're telling you, as the ten is the majority, <laughs> they're stronger than we are. The disease is more powerful than, 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 than anything. The poverty, the lack of, is more powerful than anything. The depression is so great it can't be overcome. Doesn't matter if it's majority rules. If God says something can be done, and it's yours, it can be done, and you have it. Praise God. Hold claim to that. And listen to what 32 says. And they brought up an evil, say evil, evil. evil, an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants. We saw the giants, the sons of Anak, Anak uh, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And we were in their sight. We were like grasshoppers. The word of God goes on to say in the next chapter, they cried, they wept, they murmured, they complained to Moses and Aaron. See, when God tells you something, and it doesn't have to be an audible voice. And does he talk to us sometimes? Yes. And not to us maybe directly, but I've had him talk to me directly. I know you have, where you just know what you know what you know. Bill will talk to you through other people. He's talked to me through commercials and TV. But you know what? He talks to me when I pray. But he talks to me through the Word of God. The Word of God never changes. So whenever I hear something, I make sure it always lines up with the Word of God. If it lines up with the Word of God, that never changes. If it's contrary to the Word of God, then it's not the Word of God. When someone comes and says, I have something for you, brother, and they tell me, I'll smile and nod my head, but you know what I'm going to do later? I'm going to pray and look through the Bible. That ain't for me. <laughs> That's not for me. You have people that will curse you if you don't watch it. God's Word is a blessing. God's word is a blessing. Right. See, I don't want to be one of the ten. I want to be one of those two. I want to be like Joshua and Gail. I want to be able to say, you know what? God said it's there for us. There's obstacles there. There's problems there. But God says it's for us. It's our land. If he's already promised it, we can take it. And then here comes what people will call common sense. You can't take it, Charlie. It's too big of a thing for you. They're going to eat you up. You can't do it. Get some common sense. It's not for you. You're not going to get well. We're holding on to Sister Mary's healing. Yes, God. We're going to claim it every day. 
And I don't say just heal her, God. I say, thank you, God, for the healing that you've already done for her. We're going to call those things that are not though they were. And I'm not putting her in the spot, but using her, but I'm going to use her as an example because God's leading me that way. You know what? We need to stand on the Word of God. The doctors may say one thing. Relatives may say another thing. Church may say another thing. But God says that we are healed by His stripes and we're healed. God has told me I have a sound mind. I don't have to fear anymore. And you know why I didn't have a sound mind? I'd fear everything. Fear what people thought. <laughs> if, you, if you're afraid of what people think, never become a preacher. <laughs> Don't ever be afraid of what people think. God has given me a sound mind and of power and of love, God, praise God. God. And you know what? He's given it to you all too. Yes. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. He's given to that fruit of the Spirit. And everything, He just doesn't give it to us. He gives it to it exceedingly in abundance. Amen. It's the thief that cometh to steal and kill and destroy. That's the devil. But Jesus said, in that same same scripture, John 10, 10, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Not just life, but more abundantly. So what I'm trying to get at is this church, we already own it. We already have it. Let's be like Caleb. Let's be like Joshua and not be like one of the ten. It's easy to be like one of the ten. Well, the world's telling us to do this. So we better do that, right, Brother Alex? Right. Makes sense, right? Right. Or they're saying we ought to do this, so we should do this. Mm. Or they're saying that we're doomed because of this or because of that. Or you're too old. You're too old to start a ministry. Good Lord, Abraham didn't have his child until he was 100. <laughs> <laughs> Moses was in his 80s when he started to go to Egypt. Yeah. The great Colonel Kenny Kings from Kenny King's Chicken was in his 80s before he became a success. Were you aware of that? It wasn't until after he retired and was over 65, 66 years of years, he started to pursue starting to sell chickens for a nickel a dinner the people using this recipe at different restaurants. And then he decided, man, I got enough money with all these nickels saved back in the early 50s to start my own restaurant, and the rest is history. Who's ever eaten at Kenny King's before? 80 years old. That's why you see a gray-haired man in a white white suit with a cane. You don't see a youngster. That's why that pro projection of him. In his 80s, before he became a success, he's been dead for many years, as we know those are actors and actresses. But you're never too old. You're never too old with God. I never heard of a disciple. I've never heard of a apostle. I've never heard of a follower of God in the Old or New Testament that took retirement. They worked until they couldn't work anymore. They worked until they were killed or died. There's no retirements. You're never too old. And you know what? If we can stand up in our 60s and 70s and 80s, and get around and proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. Think of the hope that gives for the youngsters that are in their 60s and 50s and 40s and 30s. And if you are in your 20s and teens and 20s and 30s and 40s, God bless you, I wish I was that age again. <laughs> but you know what? We're never too old. We're never too young. And there's no sin that is too dark. Are too bad that God cannot forgive. Right. Yeah. He's God. paid the price for all sins, yeah. for all mankind. Praise God. The gift of salvation is there for anybody that wants to take Him. When you take the Son, you have it all. If you don't take the Son, He's already paid for the price, but you don't have it. Thank you, Lord. I want you all, when we leave today, when we pray, let us have a spirit of Joshua and let us have a spirit of Caleb to see beyond the darkness. Even though there's giants, how can we overcome this? How can we overcome it? Because God said it's ours. How can we have the healing and deliverance when the doctors say, 
my body's messed up. Because God said we already have it. How can I have the peace in my life? Because God said we already have it. Every one of us has our own testimony. And every one of us has our own set of problems. And every one of us thinks our problems are worse than the other one. If you don't believe me, just ask each other. But praise be to God. We get through the problems. We get through the bad times. Because of Him. Amen. All strength comes from Him. He's already given it to you. I quote sometimes, and I'll preach just with this verse. Jesus said, My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it, but I give it to you. He is the peace giver. When all hell has broken loose and the dam has broken, the flood's coming in, guess what? Just remember that. He's given us His peace. First of all, He didn't take it with Him to heaven. Secondly, He's already back here right now living inside of our bodies itself. He said, I, my Father, will come and make our abode with you. And then I'm going to give you another. I'm going to give you a comforter, the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine? I looked at my face this morning. Tabitha said, Dad, it's time to dye your beard again. I don't know about that. But when I look in and see that face get older and older, I go, Lord, I just see an old, ugly guy here. But I also see something beautiful, too. I see you in me. Where he took something that was ugly, something that was miserable, and made brand new on the inside. So when you look in the mirror tonight or in the morning, think about that newness of life that you have, and that's from God Almighty. Amen. We already have it. We already have it. We may claim it, and we don't feel it, but we still have it. And if you hold on to that, you hold on to it. Don't give up. God will come through. I have things I'm still waiting for after 20-some years. God will come through. I have things I've waited for I thought was too long. I said, Lord, don't you ever want to say something? Did you forget about me? Hey! But he always comes through. Just like Martha and Mary and the family, they thought he was four days late. But no, he was just on time. It's not our timing, it's God's timing. Praise God. Good spirit tonight. We don't have a shouting and jumping service tonight, but that's not how God wanted it. Just a nice, peaceful, gentle service tonight. Praise God. A good spirit tonight. We all stand with me tonight. Praise God. We prayed earlier, and we are a praying church, but if anybody needs prayer tonight, come forth and we'll... We'll have the elders of the church come and we'll anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith tonight. If anybody needs anything at all for themselves, their family, we believe in intercessory prayer here. Praise God. Sister Mary. Sister Sandra, will you come up too, please? Surrender everything to him right now.